So, <coughs> phenomenon, 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 evolutionary design, law, law, and the law for this uh, third one is the constructive law. It didn't so much as change my perceptions as much as reinforce pre-existing ideas. Uh, I'm a marine science major. I'm used to studying flow and how water gets from one place to another. And so this was just another way of thinking about that, but using heat and thermodynamics as opposed to gravity and the other Newtonian forces of nature. Kind of, I guess, the general nature of it, how it can be applied across disciplines, um, and still holds true, is what makes it different than, I guess, a lot of kind of, a lot of laws. I mean, look at first, second law thermodynamics, they're kind of analyzing a thermodynamic system. Well, this, the constructor law, allows you to look at different systems um, with some sort of similarity. So if you're designing a set of pipes, it's clear that one of the optimization problems you need to do is to re reduce the resistance, which is what constructor law talks about. Um, but if it's something that's less obvious to what the flow is, so pipes, you have the flow is water or gas or something. Um, but if it's the flow of people through a building, <coughs> that's something that I wouldn't have thought of to optimize that, like calling it a flow and then finding a way to optimize the um, its movement, its path. Yeah, it's just, it applies to any flow, and so that's the, the revelation is, is noticing that everything has you know, a flow, flow going around it or through it. You just have to figure out what this flow is, and then you can see how the constructor law applies. Uh, and now you know that nature invented the wheel, not man. <laughs>